Hello everyone, welcome to another tier list video. I am Fniff, currently rank 1 in TMA. This is the uh, patch rundown for patch 0.15.2. Uh, currently on your screen is the old uh, meta tier list. And for, since then, a lot of change. We had a huge patch balancing most of the characters. And the addition, uh, my perception and like perspective on how the meta changes in TMA has changed a lot. So in multiple other titles, uh, depending on how the um, the character is buffed or nerfed, they'll either go up or down in the in the balance um, in the meta. However, I do believe in TMA since every number is pretty easy to apply in game. Meaning you'll if a damage change will have a lot of impact, a healing change will have a lot of impact. So this is pretty easy to to hit targets and utilize these buffs and nerfs. Um, in other games where there are multiple characters, this might just put them a little bit individually up or down, but in TMA, this will change the entire meta just depending on who is applying the highest numbers, pretty much. So, um, this means that I have changed the titles from the from S, A, B, C, and D to S, A, B, because I do believe all the characters are viable and strong. I 100% believe you can win with any character. I just don't recommend one tricking anyone, pretty much. Um, I do believe that if you play comps that are taking advantage of their strength, I uh, have a much uh, bigger success. So I have put it into strongest, generous, and situational, meaning the strongest are the meta-defining characters. And these are characters we will play around when we when we make comps, just like we did with, with Aussie last patch. But there are multiple this time. All right, so for the strongest characters, there's only one, really, I believe. The strongest character is Sulu, um, and the meta is generally revolving around Sulu. Um, Nightcore is a close second, and Riot is a third. I do believe all these three characters are what I would call meta-defining. These are the characters that uh, every comp should start from, and the last uh, time around we were talking about Ozzy, and every comp should build from him. This time we take the context in these characters. So, what, uh, what Sulu uh, gives to the team is just the highest DPS. He puts so much pressure on the opponent's team, he has a great ultimate, he has high burst damage, high range, he can fight pretty much anyone in a 1 versus 1 because of his 300 HP and high DPS. His uh, burst potential is really good and this can even go over walls, which is actually a very underrated uh, aspect of his kit. That most characters cannot shoot through natural cover, but Sulu can actually finish people off after they get to cover. Um, in addition, his ultimate is he farms it very fast, it can one-shot half the cast, and it's in general just a good soaring tool. Like, it's very hard not to get some value out of Sulu's ultimate, and on some maps it's absolutely broken, and it's, it generally is just a very uh, versatile ultimate. So most characters, so most comps should build around Sulu, um, and then for the second character we have Nightcore. So Nightcore right now is buffed, uh, she now deals 40 damage per hit, which is uh, quite absurd because she can now kill uh, most cards, uh, the squishes, in four, in three hits plus her dash. So in like one second, which uh, is not a lot of time to react to in general. Um, she has full invisibility right now, which means she can get close, hit three times, dash on a on a squishy, and then get a kill. It's a uh, it's very very strong, and I Nightcore is a very difficult character to play, but she is so efficient, especially in solo queue where there is a good skip uh, skill. Uh, Disparity. You can take out the opponent's strongest player with your ultimate, since there's pretty much no counterplay to an invis in a nightcore that use ultimate. Take out that person or farm any new players who are just alone. Um, and that in that way you can affect the game because it might turn the rest of the game into a three versus two for your team, which is quite advantageous. Um, additionally, she gets back to a fight much faster than most other characters, meaning trading one for one, one for two or to, um, is in general uh, a solid win for Nightcore. However, Sulu does, he can kill and survive, which is why I think uh, he is more consistent and he is a little easier to play. Riot, when it comes to tanks, is just the best one since he doesn't feed as much. I actually think this might be a problem to, uh, developing in a TMA is that they and Pyro, they're simply just feeding way too much. Um, they give ultimate to Sulu all the time and the bubble from Riot serves the same purpose as their day and Pyro's bodies does. The day wall is a bit of an exception, but the in general Riot just feeds less because of his bubble, which gives so much space to his team and blocks him out, uh, a lot of abilities. His ultimate is by far the strongest in the game. Um, it can be a complete game changer, you can kill multiple people, and Riot in general, you should track his ultimate, you should, if you're playing in a team, communicate. Riot have ult, he's looking for it or something, because you shouldn't stack up for it. In addition, he actually his damage, uh, melee damage is pretty good versus Nightcore. He can definitely fight her one on one. He can stun her, which is death sentence. 
In addition, Zulu doesn't have any mobility, so he's actually a pretty easy target to, to hook. This will be very important when it comes to the next part is generators. So the counter to, to Zulu is actually pretty much the hook and uh, Nightcore. Uh, they can both kill him. And here Tesla comes in. Tesla got a solid buff this patch, meaning especially this part, min HP is going up from 15 to 50%. This means that after the ultimate wears off, regardless of how much damage you take in these 5 seconds, you will be at 50% HP. Um, I mean, if you didn't take enough damage, you're at 100%. It heals full, of course. But after that, it's a 50%, which is a huge difference from 15 to 50. Uh, that means you don't get one shot right away. In general, her kit is very, very good right now um, in addition to these three strongest. So this is how we're building our comps. We take some of these and then we complement them with one of some of the generalists. So Tesla uh, attack range and in general damage profile matches very well with Sulu. The reduced uh, reload for Tesla from Sulu's passive is, is absolutely, uh, absurdly good. Um, her healing is good versus Nightcore, and her ultimate is especially very, very potent versus all these three, since they all have high burst damage and Tesla can negate it all with her ultimate. Especially if your Zulu gets hooked, you will be able to um, to, to alter Zulu, and he gets away. That, that is one of the strongest uh, safety options, and this is why she is the best support right now, in my opinion. Um, aside from Tesla, we have Day. Day works very well at spotting Nightcore. Um, she, he, can, he can remove her stealth very easily, just shoot in a general direction. He synergized very well with Zulu, increasing effectively Zulu's damage. Uh, they get, get they did get a little nerf on his uh, slow reduction. However, it still increases relatively Zulu's damage as he will hit more of his attacks. The reload speed is also very nice. Um, remember that the right click for for day is very very good against stationary targets, which is like the devil turrets or someone stunned from riot, for instance. The third one in the generalist is devil, and again. The generalists, they were why they're the A tier is because they synergize well, or they counter some of the other characters, or they just have, you know, in general better better matchups. They are never it's never wrong to pick one of these pretty much. Uh, I mean, they, Riot is just a good pick versus Day, and in general. But if you were to one trick something, this is probably the uh, the six characters you you should uh, one trick um, or play the most. You'll see these in the B's tier later. So Devil, um, all around character. The turrets are very, very good versus Nightcore. Both the kiting around, it gives you and your team an option because you can just run around your turrets and uh, it's very effective versus Nightcore. And the turrets can one-on-one -on -one Nightcore. It can like negate an entire zone on the map where she can't get in. Um, Devil doesn't synergize super well with Nightcore, but she synergizes super well with Riot and uh, Zulu. Like the movement speed from Devil is of course very very good with Riot, but the damage amplifier should not be underestimated on Zulu. It makes him t the health health buff makes him tankier, and the damage is absurd. So, as a as a Devil, just use your ultimate on the Zulu whenever a fight breaks out. I swear you will get some value. Uh, the Zulu buffs were absolutely massive. He now has pretty much no reload time, uh, say 25 meters on both of his attacks now, and higher uh, damage on the missiles. And in, and these missiles also have bigger radius, which means effectively they will hit up more often. Uh, the damage is absurd, and you can one-shot people with that missile barrage when you have Devil Ultimate on. I, in general, just think these two are very fine together, the Devil and Tesla and Zulu. Uh, you can't really go wrong if you just combine them uh, either way. And then just put in some uh, some mix mesh of these uh, the rest of the uh, three. All right. So when it comes to um, the situational picks, this is probably the most controversial ones. Uh, the Aussie were STL last patch. Why is he bad now? Um, it's actually he. It's not because he's bad. He can still have very good matchup. He's very good into multiple tanks, for instance. He does have a very good ultimate versus Tesla. It since removes inv invulnerability, and he, his amplifier removes the effect of high health of the tanks. So if you're ever against like a goat comp or a high, high uh, HP comp, he's still good, he's still viable, and in general I, I do approve of him. He just loses so badly to, to Zulu and, and Nightcore because of his damage, redu his damage uh, reduction, and um, you know he deals less with his orbs and auto attacks. He loses the matchup to the Nightcore who now has more damage, and he is the easiest target of the two supports. So if the enemy team has a Nightcore, I would re recommend not playing Ozzy and just picking on the others. That's why they are situational. They, all the situational characters will have a requirement to play them. Uh, and if that requirement is not met, I su highly suggest you don't play them. Um, it's not that Ozzy is uh, super bad or anything. You could definitely win with them. I just believe that if they have a Nightcore, it's easier to play other characters. All right. So when it comes to Noble, 
Noble have a super bad matchup versus uh, Nightcrawler. She is a hard counter to him, and you will in general, now that she deals more damage, have a very hard time as Noble. It, it, he's one of the easiest to just uh, run down, and if he teleports away, you can just dash after him. Um, if they have, if you're playing Noble and they play Nightcore, I kind of suggest you move to something else because you will probably lose uh, at least the one-on-one there, and you'll and she gets back to the fa uh, fight faster than you. Just remember that. The counterplay for Noble versus Nightcore is, of course, use the trap and dance around it. That is still very effective, and in general, just put down a lot of traps so your team can run around them. It doesn't really matter as much where they are; they should be used right now versus Nightcore as a counter to Nightcore. However, you are our DPS by Zulu, so and your Zulu ultimate is better. So maybe just swap to Zulu in most cases. However, the situational pick for Noble is on two point uh, destination. When there are two points, no one is better than Noble. He is the most ver uh, mobile character to carry the bump or defuse the bump or deny it in any way. So play him in that specific situation on high rise or the old destination map. When there is two points, I can highly suggest playing Noble. He is my go-to there as well. Um, when it's as soon as there's only one side, you can maybe play him with your ultimate. He is still good at denying space and uh, taking down some range fights on the squishes. However, you might be better off just again switching to Zulu if there's only a stationary place to defend or attack. Right. So Pyro is one of the fan favorites, actually one of the favorites, and I just see Pyro played wrong pretty much all the time. Right? It's actually kind of weird. Many of you would probably think, but. Uh, Fnif, uh, Nightcore, uh, and and Riot is good matchups for for Pyro. Yes, it is. However, the most played map, which is the um, facility map, has very open sidelines. In general, it's just very bad for 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 Pyro. And most people will try and play Pyro as like a bruiser skirmisher going in front and trying to fight. Uh, Pyro is neither really a tank. She just feeds a, a ton, and she doesn't really give much space. She doesn't have a wall or a bubble or anything. However, she does have, you know, the melee damage to, to, to counter these guys, of course. However, she just takes way too much effort, because uh, the only way she really works is if people go to you. That's why the situation for, for Pyro to, play, to be played is if you have the momentum on the card or you're defending a side. This is where Pyro really comes in strong, because if they have to run to you, she, she is very strong. However, she does really suffer for the Roadhog Syndrome, she feeds a lot, she, she's just self-healing. Uh, that does give her ultimate at least, um, and the ultimate is very very key for, for Pyro. You should pretty much use it, you should pretty much only attack or, you know, go in whenever there is, you have ultimate available. This is your movement speed, you need it. Get in, get a kill, get out. Uh, you do, remember you are the tank, you do, you do need to make some space and you do this by having very high DPS if they get in. Again, you can play all these three, they are definitely viable, 100%. I just think you will most of the time have a pretty hard time versus most of the kit here. If you're versus a Nightcore Riot, uh, no day, for instance, makes sense. Play Ryra as an off tank if you have a tank. So, again, there's a lot of situation that has to... She's a very niche pick. You can play her with one of the other tanks and maybe go like a Goat's Comp or something. However, you're probably just better off not. Um, anyway, this was my patch rundown. I hope, I hope it was a little quicker than last time. Uh, thank you so much for watching. See you next uh, next patch.